Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up dog. We got some preseason hockey fella. Preseason hockey. Watched a little hockey. bit last night of the Vegas Golden Knights. How was that? Ike scored. From, I saw that. From Kessel. Nice pass by Kessel. Fucking Ike snapped her top titty. I think he fanned on it a bit. It didn't Dude. quite go top cheese, it but did. it went in. Yeah. It went up. You're right. It wasn't like schmink dink. Good crowd there at T-Mobile. Sold out, looked like to me. Fuck. You like those back. gold jerseys or what? Those I are like the, the gold Those are the ones that are rocking. All year, I like them. All year. Yeah, I like them. I watched a little bit of it uh, after the football game. Just sloppy. Sloppy. Some kids out there working their balls off don't have a fucking clue what they're doing. <laughs> you just want to be like, hey, kids, slow down. Yeah. Stop. You got more time than you think. Yeah. Like, I remember miss, some of those preseason like, games? Like, yeah. I would try to be a nice guy, but I'd yell down the bench, but, hey, fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> like... Yeah. Don't just give it back to them. Like, you know, slow her down. Fuck. Back here, D to D. Scored my last goal in the National League in an exhibition game. I watched that goal at Big Canyon. Fuck, what a snipe. After the game. After, I was in Denver. After I just played, I said, Santiago, give me the remote. Fire on NHL Network. Uh, up dogs playing. You stripped the guy at center ice. You came yeah. in flying. Boom. Good ice in Far Denver. Side. It's a nice goal. I blew um, him past Girardi. Little fucker. Sam, that's not, that's not easy to do. Girardi, yeah, yeah. He fumbled it in his wheels, and I just grabbed it, and boom. I still can't believe they cut you when they did. Hey, cool little picture of you, by the way, in the Oilers fucking gear. The Prince yeah, up. little yeah. PTO in the Oilers. Hat on backwards. Almost made that squad just beneath fell apart. A lot of fucking microphones in your face. So that's when you know you're a veteran of whatever, whatever 13 years coming in. You had yeah. like a little scrum there, the Alberta boy from Fort Mac. They were wondering what the hell was going on with my leg. Yeah. No, but it was also good. I, I enjoyed talking to the media there. Yeah, I was given at the time the Oilers they hadn't had you know. Yeah, you never played in Canada, did you? I yeah. never played in Canada. It's it's fun like unless you're losing, but it's fun when you're like, get there and like you're good with the media, you would em embrace it, but you feel like all right, this is important. You come yeah. in, there's 20 media guys, there's a little scrum, you're like here we go. Yeah, yeah, totally. You know, you just can't like you're not getting one beat writer from you know fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nashville or whatever just asking about you know your childhood i didn't turn many interviews down until calgary they'd be like oh can we talk to you i'm like what do you want me to say bro i played six minutes last night you want me you just looking for a headline here or what you just want me to rip bob or <laughs> i'm like i'm not giving you what you want but see you later fella. i like talking to them preseason hockey though i like to see the young kids out there as much as i chirp them we all made mistakes especially young i made tons of them but the one thing i want to remember if there's any degenerates out there i almost bet the fucking golden knights kings game i don't know i would just to watch it just to watch just it i don't pay know. attention I saw Ike's was playing with Kessel and uh, I think it was Marshall or who they had a top line out there. Nice. McNabb was playing, Petra was playing. I'm like, ah, maybe I'll take Vegas here. Who was the goal? Who was their Thompson, goal? their left handed uh, goalie. Was? Okay, he's their starter. But the Kings had their top line in of Kempe, Fiala, and uh, was it Kopi or? That's so, going to be a good line. I, I, I um, Fiala scored. Fiala scored. He's going to be a good player there. He'd yeah. be a good fit. Um, Kempe and uh, I feel like Kempe and Kopitar are both centers, right? Ah, uh, let's have a try. I think Kempe's a winger, but Kempe's a good player, and and Kempe's I think he's a sick player. I man. think he's the perfect young um, Anze Kopitar esque player. They look the same out he's there. He's finally like I, I told you the story about when I played. Uh, he's a right winger. I told you the story about you think everyone plays center. Right? Uh, <laughs> guy comes low and slow You're all like, the time. Plays center, doesn't he? I'm like, I don't think he plays center ups, but. I remember, I, I've told this story on this podcast again, but that you brought it up. I played against Kempe when I was in San Diego and he was in Ontario. And I'm like, there was two players in that, that year in that league that I said this to, Dreisaitl and him. Dreisaitl's in Bakersfield. I'm like, Kempe, you're in the wrong league, bro. What are you doing down here? And it took him a while to figure it out, but he's a stud. Um, but I don't know. I was just thinking some of our beauty listeners. If you are out there looking and up, you can contest to this. Like, Sometimes don't look at the lineups because there was times in preseason where I would look at our team and most of the time I was, you know, what do you got to get eight veterans in there? So they're like, ah, yeah, we'll throw Brian in there. <laughs> and our team was just guys that had no chance of making the NHL, but they played their balls off. And, they, and you know what? We found a way to win. And I was like, wow, if you would have looked at those two teams on paper, the other team had their two top lines in because they're, they're at home, right? You always play your vets at home, right? Totally, was, yeah, yeah. And we found a way to win. So if you're a degenerate out there and you're on your DraftKings app, don't always look at the lineups this time of year because guys will play their balls off. And sometimes veteran guys are like, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to, you know, don't give me the puck. I'm just, this just is. Just don't, I don't want to get hit with that fucking block a shot or. 
Yeah, what do you think of like the NFL? Like half these quarterbacks didn't even play a snap in preseason. It's it's crazy to me. And like I, I wanted to ask you about preseason games because as you go on, vets, we don't love it, right? I don't. I never mind playing at home, but anytime I go on the road, you travel the same day. You're usually going in against a better team than you have on paper because the Sedins aren't flying to fucking Regina to play against the Flames. You know what I mean? When they're in Vancouver. I don't know, but preseason is important to us is what I'm saying, right? Yeah, you, it is. Like, how many games did you want to play? No, I wanted to play, like, four. Yeah, me too. Four over the course of uh, two and a half weeks, right? Yeah. So, like, two games a week. Yeah. Two like, games get, a week, and I'm, I'm good. Get me in an early one. Get me in an early one the first week, yeah. and then and then I want to play, you know, two or three down the stretch near the end. And then the last one, as you know, the last one of, of, of ex- exhibition is a team. And obviously, you want to be on that one. Of course, of yeah. course. And, you know, your hip flexors will probably be barking after the first three days of camp, right? So... I, I feel like if there's no uh, if there's no injuries or nothing nagging you, then you should want to get in and get the speed of the game and get that physical play under you know underneath your belt. Like yeah. no, like you should, yes, you're battling in these like blue and gold games amongst yourselves, but you're not like you know you're not trying to take a head off. You're not having to keep your head up all the time, right? You're not. Yeah. You know, I, although you'd probably run me. <laughs> Most guys aren't trying to take your head off if you're on your own team. I mean, only when I was on the PTO, I fucking took, I almost killed Rocco Grimaldi, but that's because I was on the PTO. When I was on a one-way, no, I was never, unless there was a young guy that was being a prick, then I would, you know, maybe do something to him. But no, I was just trying to get through training camp, especially to a veteran guy like you. I would, yeah. I, well, maybe you, I might just give you one little cross check to laugh Let or something. Let me know you're there. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm with you. Four preseason games is perfect. If you're betting on preseason out there, be careful with the lineup. Sometimes they might get you. There's got to be people betting on preseason hockey, right? <laughs> I mean, probably, but there's no way to handicap it at all. Like, they should just... You can bet on preseason, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, camp. but I don't know how, like, uh, a handicapper, so a Vegas odds That's what I mean. Like, is going to pick the right game. And hockey's already a fucking coin flip anyway. That's true. For a lot of it. That's true. Uh, of scheduling Comes down to goal and goaltending and injuries, but... I would say this if you're thinking about betting is, in preseason, as you know, ups, you fly in the same day of a game. They don't fly in the night before for whatever reason, just to save a few bucks, I guess, but... That could maybe play into maybe you take the home team. I would say if I had to, if I was going to bet, I would take home teams more than road teams. But the Kings went into Vegas last night and won. So. Worked them. Worked them. Stayed the night. Had a time. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to say this, um, you know, because I did this to make the NHL. I had to fight my way in there. My, you know, my – the year I made the Ducks, I think I had three three fights in preseason. There was a fight between Ben Harper and Jamie Devon. If this is the same Devon that I, that was – this guy's a murderer – um, the, one of the kids got dropped. You never want to see anyone get hurt or knocked out. It's a terrible they throwing, feeling. They were throwing hard. They too. were throwing hard, yeah. though. And and to me, it was nice to see two guys that are willing to drop their gloves that are trying to make an NHL hockey club. And I, I feel awful the guy got dropped. But at the end of the day, I still think there should be room for guys coming in there that maybe aren't as skilled as someone else but are willing to drop the gloves and get in there and prove to the GM and coach, hey, I want to be here. Yeah. I, I know it's not as big a role, but I don't know. It was good to see. And I felt awful the guy got dropped. I hope he's okay up, dog. But when, when we were coming up, that was that's all it was. That was it. Yeah, was you, you almost had to, whether you liked it or not, you knew going into training camp you had to fight. You had to, yeah. Especially at a young age. Exactly. I mean, that's total mindset is kind of fucking thrown out the door now. And, and that doesn't, that doesn't you know, affect the game too much. But like you said, if two guys do want to step up and fight and it's – it's you know yeah. it should be a lot i agree those boys were chucking there wasn't much defense in there and like a lot of the guys now they're not gonna absolutely kill you with with you know punches no there's before a... in the day there were some guys out there who were you know murderers they were artists of of hitting you in the face did you ever play in those rookie tournaments back in the day like i remember we had rookie tournaments that sure it did. was like us the kings sharks one was at el segundo one was in anaheim but yeah i mean georgie peros and san jose had these tough guys and we had it was just like every other game there was three or four fights it was just like it was kind of scary to be honest with me yeah you know what yeah I'm like just get me out of here alive so um i like seeing the boys fight for their job though up dog never want to see them get hurt but uh luke richardson head coach of the chicago uh blackhawks who i played with in tampa who told me the line stretch your body stretch your career obes first day with the media he comes in handing out beers up dogs handing out goose that's a veteran island beers that's a good get- ipa yeah, he's Goose like, Island IPA. It's gonna, nice... gonna be a long, be long year here. Maybe I get these guys some beers. It'll be on my side. Yeah, it sure is, isn't it? A long year. Have but you seen the odds it. on them winning the Stanley Cup? It's, it's like plus twenty five thousand. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's it's 
crazy the odds. They'd have a better chance of bringing back Buff and Seabrook and yeah. fucking Steger and uh, <laughs> Bowley. They'd have a better chance to win than the team they're going to put on there Sharp, right now. Yeah. Sharpie. Ben Eager. Ben, bring them all back. You'd have a better shot than they do with this team. They're going to be terrible. terrible. So that's a classy act. I see, again, talking to the media. Treat, Treat the media well. I always you yeah. know, have them on your side. You have to. You have to. As much as you fucking sometimes it drive you nuts, you got to have them on your side. And, yeah. and I love Luke Richardson. I think he will turn it around. Uh, it's just not going to be this year. And then Camp Torturella. I've witnessed it firsthand two times in my life. It's it's the hardest three days of your life. And then to, there's nobody better than Torts after that. Days off, rest. He's the man. This one poor kid, I don't know his name. He felt the pain. He was fucking tits up. <laughs> saw the pick it's done straight. broke the internet done broke the net <laughs> done um, you know Travis Green was trying to keep up to that yeah you totally his first it. three days at camp were no joke but with the fitness testing it was fitness testing and the first day of practice in the same day it's it's actually criminal yeah I thought Greener might not be that guy oh, he like was, he, he, he was, no he warned me he said he had called me about you going to you know his ups in shape I said he's always in shape he said no but listen Obes I have a fucking I go a hard training camp yeah. I said I played with you. You wouldn't seem like a guy who would have loved a hard training camp. But he said, well, as a coach, I got to do it. Yeah. And I said, you don't, you can't tell what guys are in shape just by watching them through training camp. You need to know those first three days. And he's like, I can tell which guys are in top, top shape when I put them through that. So it's you a made way, yeah. You and made it's her through it's, it. It's, again, it's fucking psychological. Psychological fuck warfare. Yeah. Towards this camp was hard. He made us run the three mile test in Tampa about 110 degrees and four o'clock in the afternoon. The humidity. I'm like, Jesus Christ. What the fuck are you doing, Towards? <laughs> what are you doing? But uh, anyways, good luck to those boys. The, the, the hardest parts behind them up be preseason now. They can start seeing the regular season. Now it's now I wish I was back at camp. You get through that first week. Uh, bringing us first segment, uh, brought to you by our good friends at Life Force promo code. Curfew. The updog came up with this title. It's perfect. It's just a good old fashioned injury bug. Um, staying in Philadelphia. Listen, I'm pulling for Philly. I love Torts. I respect Chuck Fletcher. Obviously, we love Kevin Hayes. I think hockey's better when Philly's good. You played it. You were a great flyer. You know it better than anything. Tough start for them. Good news on Sean Couturier. You mentioned this last year, last week before we talked about it to make sure. It's maybe not as bad as they think. He could be coming back maybe a month or so. Ryan Ellis, though, this one hurts. And this, this is a great is pickup. He hasn't even been able to play Fuck. for him. It just sucks. And I've, I've went through pelvic injuries. It's, I, bet, I bet you went through pelvic injuries. Oh, I also <laughs> I had a strong pelvic floor at one point. I, I, bet, I bet you had And I got injuries. back in my, in my prime after that. But <laughs> um, it's just tough because you, you think of that. It's, you know, a pelvic injury, man. It's something that can, you know, it can end you. It's, it's, you, you can't fucking move. You can't yeah, skate. Fuck. You know, it's... It's consistent pain, and, and it's hard for, you know, a doctor just can't come in and say, oh, you know, you have a torn MCL at six weeks. Like, you just don't know how these how these pelvic injuries and your abdominal muscles I and know. your groins and your fucking... Because you can't battle through it. No matter. You can't. No, you can't, you can't play. Can't Look play. at, you know, Darnell Nurse in the playoffs. He couldn't, you know, he couldn't skate. He we're, just... <laughs> we're going to... Yeah, you're right. We're going to get to Darnell Nurse. But, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, you can't battle through those stuff. It's just rest and hoping... And, yeah, and it's it's trying to like retrain your mind. when those when those muscles shut down after an injury. There, it's hard for you to like teach your brain to f make those things fire, like, like proprioception type stuff. They shut down, and yeah. then they're only prone to more injuries if you come back and rush it too much. And that's what a lot of teams do. They're like, "Oh well, you look good. You're walking around now. You should yeah, get out there and skate." There. And you go out and skate, and you tear something else. It's so I, anyway, Ryan Ellis is a hell of a player. That he was sucks, a hell of a player man. for the Nashville Predators when we played against him. And he was he's been a big reason why they're I thought it was such a great trade for them when they made that trade. And it just sucks that he can't get out there. Maybe he'll bounce back, but and you talk about these injuries and, and you know, Camp Torturella, like I said, the first three days are hard, and then he gets you through it to where he doesn't want anyone to get hurt. And I used to often think that about training camp, like all right, you want to bag us the first couple of days to see who maybe fucking didn't put the extra work and go ahead. But then is our goal not as a team and an organization here to get our not only our top players, but our guys that are on one ways through this training camp not hurt, right? Like, let's just get through this. And Gerard Gallant said this to us in Florida, you know, after I hit Rocco, but he said this the whole time. Like, we're not out here to kill each other, boys. We're just trying to get through it, learn our systems, and be healthy come game one. Cause then that's when the fucking marathon starts. Yeah. And that's why some coaches are players, <laughs> players coaches, right? Yeah. Cause they just understand that, hey, I've, I played, I've been through this. Yeah. These two weeks, you know, they should be tough, 
But at the same time, like I'm fucking, I'm only, you know, I'm only your coach here. I'm here to lead you guys. I, I don't want to fucking bury you. Yeah. Like, but mentally you got to prepare them for like, you know, you want to come out of the gate with a great start. And if you believe pushing them through like that pain and like those mornings where you don't want to get up and you don't want to skate, you yeah. don't want to do extra bag skates, like mentally that may, might set them up to succeed later, but it's, it's not, a, at, no, not it's, at the cost of it's injuries. A, it's a good point by you too. And, and I will say this again about Dallas Aikens. Dallas Aikens is the best guy I've ever seen for making sure we're in shape, but also making sure I'm not crossing the line. But then I go back to my old friend, Bob Hartley. We were so shit in Calgary, but we were in such good shape coming out of training camp that we got off to a pretty good start, right? We, you could see teams couldn't skate with us right away. And that can happen sometimes. But as, you know, month two went on and month three went on, it was like, all right, now we're just, we're fucking yeah, in yeah. one here, right? The rest of the boys are in shape. But if you want to get off to a good startups, it's a good point by you. So stay healthy, boys out there. Stay away from the injury bug, as the up dog would say. Um, we're going to get past that. Hubie, our boy Hubie. Um, great little, great little training camp tweet here from the Lamborghini to the Black Dodge. Um, for free, mind you. That's one of the perks of playing in Cowtown. You get hooked yeah. up with a nice truck. Weegsy Baby got a nice one. Okay. I just thought it was a cool tweet. Letting Hubie know, like, I don't know. I just what thought is, it was awesome. Wow, this escalated quickly, right? Yeah. That's what he said. This is escalated quickly. Yeah, and I bet you. Wait till January, Hubie. No, no, no. You sold your bank account. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that, thing, that thing just added a bunch of zeros to it quickly. Quickly. Now, you deserve every bit of it, Hubie. You're a fucking great player. And I think the jersey looks great on him. Great on him. I, mean, I'm gonna give I think the for, Calgary Flames jersey looks for great For Hubie as a French Canadian to say, hey, listen, obviously the money speaks for itself. and But still, to make that commitment to a team where, well, we like Calgary. We'll pull them for them, obviously. Daryl Sutter, Brad Treely, we like them all. But they have no rank right now. There, there's, there's some reasons why a lot of guys wouldn't go there. Hubie said, fuck it, bring it on. So I respect that. And I love the fact that... Um, um, Brad Tree Living, sorry, I almost fucked his name up. Brad Tree Living flew to Montreal, met with Hubie day after the trade, sat man to man with him, told him, you know, this is what we're doing. We're going all in. We're going to try to grab Kadri. We're going to, we're bringing in you and Uyghur. You guys yeah. had great years. Um, you know, let's get a deal done. I just like that man to man. Totally. Like the GM, knowing that this is a big piece and now a face of the franchise. Um, I just love the way that that all transpired. I, I agree, and I don't know why every GM doesn't do that. Even throughout my playing career, I'm like, just come talk to me, right? Yeah. Like, just come talk to me. Like, we're all men here. Like, um, Weegsy Baby, I'll tell you what, you look fire in the jersey, Weegsy Baby. They did some photo of him. and had the hair. He was looking good. Looks good. 52. Looks, looks like he's in shape. He's ready. Yeah, Told fast. me he's ready. I said, hey, you, you get a little baby fat, you ready to rock. He said, I'm ready. I said, awesome. you get the baby fat come December. Yeah, baby. Um, Daryl Sutter, our boy Daryl Sutter taking shots at another one of our boys. Uh, I'm sure Maddie probably didn't even hear about this down. In, well, they got a hurricane coming through Florida, so he's probably out there right now. But he said, when asked about Maddie Kachuk and Tyler Toffoli, what the difference is, Daryl Sutter said, one guy's won cups. And been a big influence on a long playoff run. So I don't know if Matty Kachuk needs a little more fuel in the fire down there in South Florida. But if you he did hear yeah. it, I'm sure that's going to get him going a little bit. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I, I know why his game fell off last year in the playoffs. I saw, I, I had seen the injury when it happened. I know he was icing his elbow and his arm after every game. That shit's not easy to play with. And they ran into the Edmonton Oilers in a complete buzzsaw. Their team was, wasn't clicking. But, you know. Hey, Daryl Sutter has the right to say whatever the hell he wants. He's won his cups. Tyler Toffoli, you know, his, his He's got reputation two speaks for itself. I don't think fucking Toffoli would say anything about Matthew Kachuk like that. I bet you he'd say he's an incredible teammate, an incredible player. Um, you know, they're all feeling the loss last year, and it's been a bitter, you know, probably a bitter summer for those guys living in Alberta, you know. Daryl Sutter, Daryl Sutter living in Red Deer, being like, hey, you guys got work by the Oilers. Like, he's pissed off. Yeah. And then, Good you know, point. the team gets shaken up. And that's just, you know, he can yeah. feel he speaks his mind. That's why we love him. I Daryl love Daryl Sutter. And I, I would say, you know, you're right, Matty was hurt. 97 wasn't going to be stopped. And I would say this about Daryl Sutter, and I love him, and he's got more cups than I got, and he's fucking won. I didn't think he did a great job making adjustments through that series against the Oilers. So I'm sure he's learned from that. We love Matty Kachuk here. Matty, I, I, Matty will win his Stanley Cup or two. I, I really, truly believe that. So... But hey, Daryl Sutter, he's good content. It's good for yep. us here. Um, our boy Gibby, real quick, new mask. We've talked about Top Gun. He's got the Maverick mask. And shout out to Duck Social Media. They do a lot of cool things up, dog. We know those boys, right? You're yeah, saying? they're fucking beauties. They're great. Yeah, they they're doing a, cool stuff. 
They've helped me out uh, personally with some stuff. They've done that. Uh, they had Ziegs and the boys and Gibby coming off the plane at the All Star game. Yeah, they work hard. The Ducks and they need to do that. The Ducks need to have that, uh, you know, that kind of professionalism when it comes to their social media. The stuff they did used to do with Juice, Kevin Bieska, going in the games like that stuff's great. Great yeah. content. Yeah. Um. So I, I like the mass too, and Miramar, right where they film that Maverick, where the school is, is right down the street. I know that because I have one of those top gun watches it says miramar on the back but that's their flight school down yeah, just south just, of san yeah, yeah right. north of san diego or, right yeah. it's down where uh max lives pendleton yeah no it's oh, uh, no. south of pendleton it's down close to san diego okay yeah so these beauties i think it's a uh, little respect sick movie sick uh, movie john gibson said his favorite movie ace ventura love i love gibby too. for many reasons and that's another one so uh ducks keep doing your thing gibby i love that mask top gun what a flick that was i might watch it again tonight Fuck, how do you time watch all I'm into this, by the way, listen, I got to tell you, I'm into Succession hardcore, like binge watching Succession. It's fucking great. I know, it's a great show. They don't, they just go from, they just go from black car to helicopter to private bird to function to party. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. That private bird they have on that is so sick. That's the life, yeah. Yeah, they're spending it. Yeah, they're yeah. spending it. Great, great show. So I'm, I'm hardcore into it. Uh, our boy Trevor Zegris, the Ducks, once again, their social stuff did a little segment on uh, who would you want to be stuck on the road with? I would have said Scotty Upshaw would have been my answer. You know, we know we would have a good time, find a way. Who wouldn't you want to be stuck with? And they all said Zegris. Shaddy, Cam, Drysdale, Jonesy. Just a handful. Just huh? a fucking, I said Z, I think that just means they like you, buddy, eh? Can't handle walking around being the uh, second best looking guy. Huh? I guess. <laughs> Ziegs, just stick with it, baby. Ziegs, man, this guy, he's something. So uh, he loved it, though. They're, you can't get out of that kid's skin. But Ducks, Ducks social media, keep it up. You guys are good for the game. And for people out there who haven't checked it out, their stuff's cool. So maybe give them a follow. Um, the Fact Daddy, first of all, they got a new uh, sponsor on his bucket. That car shield thing he does commercials for with me and Patty Maroon. Yeah. But Princey, shout out to Princey, he noticed that Factor had a fucking mission helmet. I don't know if it was just for the commercial. I can't see him getting rid of the Bauer 4500, the Fact Daddy. And Kess, unless Warrior's paying him some cheddar or something. There's no way he's changed his bucket. No, he's always had the Warrior stick, but... Yeah, but never. He's always had that sick old school Bauer 4500 huh. bucket. Maybe Carshield fucking stepped up and said, hey, Fact Daddy. Who knows? I, I went to a Warrior bucket at one point, too. Did you? It's not a bad bucket. But it's not a bad bucket. It definitely changes the look when you've been that old school Bauer guy that's retro. Maybe Bauer's not even making those helmets anymore. Maybe not. Getsy had wore one his whole career. We should get we should get Facti on in a deal with Sutsi's company. Hey, Vibero. Vibero. Sign them up. Should. Sign them up. But they're not NHL. We mean they're not allowed to wear in the NHL? No. Oh wow. No, they don't Why buy the rights. Ah, just... They gotta buy the right for each piece of equipment. You want a glove in there, 150 grand. You want, you know, stick, two hundred grand. Yeah, so I think it was just for the commercial. I'm saying the Fact Daddy, who's got some of the best style in the National Hockey League, by the way, the Fact Daddy. Doesn't he sure have does. a good style? Yeah, where's Woo. the C? Woo. Con Smythe. Come Stick on. with that Bauer 4500. Um, Updog, our next segment brought to you by our good friends at DraftKings. It's just simply called Over Under, buddy. I saw this uh, last week. They came out with the preseason Over Unders for goals. And this one, I just was like, I got to talk to you about this. Austin Matthews right now, over under 56 and a half, which I guess he went over last year. It just kind of went like, what? 56 and a half? I, I don't know. Like, why not just 50? I, I think I he almost bet on him missing some games and taking the under, right? Well, he missed the games last year and I still know, got he over. nine right off the hop of the bad wrist. I mean, I, I would take the over, but I just didn't, as an old goal scorer as yourself, does that not just jump out? Like, I know he's nasty, but 56 and a half? Maybe they're expecting just more penalties to be called this year. And him, God, I, yeah, I mean, how I much better? Not. How much better can he? Hope not. Can he play? Like, how much more consistent can he play? Is he? Can he stay healthy for eighty two? I guess that's, is the question. That's, well, I, I would just bet on that. Hockey's still hard to to play and hard to stay healthy with, right? I'm going over Patty. I'm fucking going over Patrick Liney, thirty three and a half goals. I'm taking the over on that bad boy. Yeah, Him and Johnny fucking Johnny Gilbert. Hockey that's and that Johnson. I'm going over on that. McDavid forty four and a hook. How many did he get last year? Did he get fifty? Must have. I don't think he got 50 last year. Ovi, 44 and a half. The class of, when, when is Ovi going to slow down? Like it, it didn't look like anytime soon last year, but like, does Ovi get over that? Does Ovi get close to 50? Man. It's crazy some of these fucking numbers. I know, but done. last year, there was how many guys were over 40 goals last year? There must have been Stand fucking by. 25. It was, it was crazy. Um, 
Yeah, I see, you know, Kreider over 39. I mean, the guy got 50 last year. He got 50. He He's, you know what, I've had this conversation with Loops. Like, he's the guy that just, like. Took advantage of the game. Go to the net. No, one, the net. no one's going to no touch. Yeah, he, he no fucking one's going to touch me. It's a bulldog in front of there. No one's going to touch me. I would take the over in the dry sidle, 49 and a half. Would you? Dry sidle, 49 and a half? Yeah, I would take over that. So here we go, fella. Last year, oh, I just fucked it up. Last year, Matthew 60, Dry Seidel 55, Kreider 52, Ovi 50, Kirill the Thrill 47, Kyle Connor 47. Man, it's but crazy. like, how many 40 Dude. goal scorers were there? there how there many were, 40 goal scorers were there? Great question. Just keep going down. I'm going. There's, that'd be 20. Uh, yeah, fuck your bang on, buddy. There was, uh, 15. Barkov had 39. Tage Thompson had 38. Okay. 15 40 goal scores. Or more, right? Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. It's a goal scoring league. I think that Debrink is probably going to get over 38 and hook two playing in Ottawa for whatever reason. Is he their best player? I mean, it's the best goal scorer. They got a pretty good team. They got Brady. Claude Giroux feeding him one. Claude Giroux. Well, he's not a Batherson. Claude Giroux, but. Yeah. I'm interested to see. We'll, we're going to do our rundown, obviously, we do every year on teams we want to pick. But Ottawa Senators are one of the teams that I'm looking at. And we talk about training camps. They've notoriously, the last two years, have horrendous starts. And they can't afford it. So I, I'm sure DJ Smith and, and bringing in Claude Giroux, they've probably tinkered some of their training camp. But they got to come out and not fucking just, you know, lose yeah. eight of the first ten. And you're like, you're done. You're like, done. You got to figure it out. So um, Patrick Liney. Over 33 and a hook. I'm going to bet it right after this podcast is over. See, he shaved his head. He's one ugly looking bastard. But <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a good guy, man. He's got a good sense of humor. Like, I just saw a video. So of him. he went with the skull. Does he still have the back mullet? <laughs> I don't know. And then another thing I loved about him there before training camp, he was out there with a hoodie over his fucking helmet. I'm like, unless he's trying to lose some weight for the fat test. I was like, what's he doing with that thing out there? Um, yeah, he's, he's gonna have a big year though. Johnny Hockey, I saw some highlights last night. Three assists looks pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good. He said the cannon still scared him. I'm sure, he'll get used to it. Um, our next segment brought to you by our good friends at Good Life. The Updog came up with this again. It's just called Living the Good Life, baby. I mean, shout out to our boy Dave Pinota, Fourth Period Magazine. They put out the highest paid players in the National Hockey League this year. These if are I some, big, you, these are some big checks coming in every 12 weeks. If I would have given you a fucking five, I could have given no, you a, no, I you would have never, never, ever I would have never guessed. guessed number one. Tyler Sagan, 13 bananas. And is this uh, including signing bonus? It has to be. That, I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, it's got I, it's, it's to be. Um, top five here. So Tyler Sagan threw me off. The bread man making 12 and a hook. That's fair. Just sign that big ticket. And then they went Barkov at 12, Bobrovsky at 12, and then putting out the top five. And this is no disrespect to this guy because he was a fucking sick player when I was in the league and you were in the league. But this is one of the reasons why San Jose is in one a bit. Eric Carlson, 12 bananas. He's making the same as Connor McDavid. Drew Doughty, 11 million. And then you talked about him. This kid battled through last year. Darnell Nurse is making 12 bananas. That's Come that's on. a tough one. That's a tough one. Come on. I mean, good for good for a guy getting paid. Um, maybe they paid. They had to pay a little bit extra to stay in Edmonton. But you want to imagine you split that up with two sixes. That's what not, I mean. Like yeah. Nurse should be making seven, eight tops. Or so if you like, you know, yeah, I just like, like he should be making like six and a half for six. Yeah, like he he just got again. Listen, we want all these guys to make as much money as we can, like we see every week. Just but, think how much better your team is. Yeah, the Edmonton Oilers are a wagon and maybe favorites if they add another six million dollar defenseman. Right, if you go to cap friendly. But God, it's just hard to like. You got to take the money. Of course. You no, know, yeah. Hey, listen, not everyone's Darnell like, Nurse, I think he's a fucking, he plays hard. Yeah. He'll chuck him. Um, and his average hit, his average hit is 9.2. So I don't know why. Maybe signing bonuses or something no, yeah, this yeah, year. But, he's but making still, 12. if that's six and a half, you add another yeah. three and a half million dollar player. Tyson Bears is making four and hooks. Still. That's hey, Bears. Fair. Holy that's fuck, fair. Bears. Good for him. That's a good deal. Um, I, Jason Demers, I hope he makes that team. I hope he makes the Oilers. How is uh, what's the depth? So chart listen, like? they got their top four: Brett Brett Kulak, who's a big pickup. Evan Bouchard will be there. Yeah, 
Then they got the young uh, Philip Broberg kid. Yep. Ryan Murray. I think there's room there for a right-handed fucking beauty like Demers. I don't know. We'll see. First Jake, PTO. Good fucking go get him. Jake for Tannen's on, on a yeah. PTO up front. I think he could help them with some size. They lost Cassian. You still look at this team here, Ops. I mean, fuck, there's I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Jesse Pooley RV, three bananas. Fuck me. They're looking to move him. Everything I read, they're trying to move him. At three million? I don't know. Maybe they eat some. <laughs> yeah. yeah, about two million of it. So <laughs> uh told, another one that jumped out me, Oliver Ekman Larson still making ten and a half. How are you? How are you? That's got to be, uh, I'm sure the Yotes are eating some of that. For sure. Yeah. And then Jeff Skinner down at number 19, 10 bananas for Jeff Skinner. That's, I have written down here. That's, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's, that's an Ovi down at number 18, only making 10 bananas. That's fair. That's fair. And then our boy Ike there at number 13. And I'll tell you, bananas. I'll tell you maybe the biggest deal on this list. What? Is number 16, Kirill Kaprizov at 10. Yeah. Kid's a stud. And he got that deal in his second year. Of being I, I just think he's. He's a top five player in the league, so he's a top five player in the league. Great point by you. Yeah, and I only think here. Let me look here. Um, how many years did he sign it for? Oh, he did. He's got four more years at it. He's twenty five, so he'll be thirty when it's. So he'll be twenty nine. Yeah, it's nine million. He's you're right. He's top five player. He's exciting. Um, I'm interested to see what's going on in Minnesota. Uh, but we'll get we'll break down our picks and all that stuff. So good on those buys. Shout out to Fourth Period Mag. Check it out. Those guys are beauties. Ken Yotes. Sagan, you beauty. Thirteen bananas. <laughs> he'll be calling flowers. Bananas. He'll be calling flowers. Ordering a couple new watches. Maybe Man. a Richard Mille after that. Thirteen bananas. That is that is something special, dude. Living in Dallas. Now his 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 hit is nine point eight. That's what it says here on Cap Friendly. But thirteen with the bonuses you're talking about. Yeah, so these include all the bonuses. Yeah. Good for Tyler Sagan. Bonuses are nice. How old's Tyler Sagan? He's only thirty. Feels like he's been he won 40. a cup at nineteen or eighteen. So yeah, he's been around forever and great guy. Good so, player. Good for him. Stud. Good for him. Thirteen bananas. Enjoy your enjoy your life in Big D. Um now it's presented by our good friends, Living the Dream, Good Life promo code. Curfew. Up dog. This is a little segment we came up with. This is picking up some traction. Curfew calls. Maxi, baby. We got a couple more here. We, we got a couple more this week. Let's hear them. I uh, just want to say one thing about curfew calls before we move forward here. I wanted to rip somebody today on this curfew calls. And Updog and Maxi and Binger talked me off the ledge. But I think, I think, fellas, listen, if you want to call in, you got to run the risk. I'm going to fucking chirp you. All right? I get chirped on social media. It's part of the game. Updog, moving forward. If you're going to call in and leave us a lemon, I'm going to light you up. Fair right. enough. I'm not going to let Binger and his, only this guy, so, only and his this soft one. eyes and Maxi, nice guy, talk me off the ledge next time. I'm going to lighten him up. Okay, well, only this one guy who called in with the bad, you know, he was a pretty shitty one. Pretty shitty story. And I, like I would say, boys, it's like my tough. You didn't leave us with much. Like my coach would say, keep him short. We got to have short that. and sweet. Keep him short and sweet. Less yeah. is more. But listen, no, in all honesty, we love it. It's been a great hit here. We want to hear from you, beauties. Stories. Rip me in the up dog. Keep them coming. Curfew call, Maxi. Send it. Yeah, our first guy here, Mike Kinner McKinnon. Kinner. Obes, Hoppy, <laughs> how's it going? This just wanted to start off by saying thanks. Thanks for making the back half of my week what it is. I look forward to you guys dropping your episodes every Thursday. Um, boys, I finally got to see my morning jacket last week, and um, wow. You know, I, I was a guy that played some hockey back in the day in the Central League. Shout out to Cody oh, Leibel. What a beauty <laughs> and uh, a little bit of time in Europe. And um, I was always a guy that curated music in the room or for the warm ups, And it's a big part of my life. I, I still in my work life organize sometimes certain trips to make sure I get certain gigs in. And, um, you know, my morning jacket blew my mind last week. And um, I know you guys are a big fan and you've been pumping the tires for Jimmy James and the boys um, since the inception of the podcast. And the question I have for today is, Let's provide the listeners with the top three gigs that you guys have ever seen. Let's talk about where, let's talk about why, and let's talk about maybe some stories that go around it. Should be some good content. Keep up the great work, lads. Yep. Fucking A. What a guy. Keener. He just, he fucking fell for Jimmy, didn't he? Yeah, Jimmy James. And listen, you know what? Keener Updog was the first guy to take me to an MMJ concert. So I know what you're talking about. When you see Jimmy come out for the first time with the... The towel over the head and the, the bear on show, stage and the fucking jacket and the cape. It. 
Epic. There's no better t- no better band live than My Morning Jacket. Yeah, yeah. Boys, you seen My Morning Jacket before, Binger? Fuck, they're no, good. We gotta take you, boys. I haven't seen so what? One, one sticks out for me. My first time I saw him at Ryman Auditorium in Nashville. I went with Bizzle. Nice. And we took a couple of our girlfriends at the time working at the roof, <laughs> and it was fucking awesome. So that was my first experience. It was back it, small venue. I'm assuming it was well tiny. The yeah, Ryman's you awesome. know, right downtown, maybe a thousand people is yeah, awesome. That's sick. It's like a, a church basically. And then I have here one that you were at two obes. Uh, so was Jimmy Hayes. So was our boy. Uh, Pearl Jam, Boston, Fenway, Double Whammy. I went to the second show. You went to both. That was epic. Epic. P- fucking at, right at the Fenway. The only bad thing about that is, remember we went to the, the club after we had to take our hat off, and I lost my, cell, I lost my green Pearl Jam shamrock cap. But other than that, it was an epic yeah, night. I still have that hat. <laughs> um, so that, to me, was one of my best shows uh, with all my buddies. Fucking a cathedra- Frosty a cathedral, and a Cathedral, the baseball stadium. Um, and then before you get into yours, which probably you can do again, I saw Coldplay at the Sky Dome. Wow. Fucking epic. Sold out. I went back to back nights during the Biosteel camp one year. See, again, <laughs> boy, this is what I do when I go to these Biosteel camps. Back to back. I sat in the front row with my cousin, Mitch. Shout out to him. His company, Shoot for Success. He's, uh, he helps these college kids fucking elevate their game before they go off to college. So shout out to Mitch. But we went, uh, I had Bertuzzo with me, and then uh, fucking PK Subban was there. There's a bunch of guys from the camp there, but Chris Martin fucking kicks ass. Yeah, I've never seen Coldplay. They are awesome. I live. remember you sending video or videos on your Instagram. They're live. Yeah, it's just it epic sick. live. Anyone's never seen them. That's a great show. I love that you went back to back. Like you couldn't just went. I went in a in, went, in a box. Went back to back. I went in a box for one show, and I went front row for one. Uh, both do you remember them. we saw Metallica in Vancouver? That was pretty good too. Metallica. Yeah, yeah I do remember that. I'm going to go with, first and foremost, Bonnaroo, the updog. You were the captain of Bonnaroo. You took me there for my first time. The whole Bonnaroo experience was amazing. Arcade Fire, My Morning Jacket, Eminem, and then I think fucking Wu-Tang Clan came on later some night. By that point, I was on a fucking different planet. But that was my first, like... And you and you and Loops introduced me to going to live music. So without you two boys, I would have never really got into it. And then My Morning Jacket at the Will Turn Me and You. We saw him three nights in a row. LA, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. venue down in downtown LA. Yeah, it's Hollywood. Awesome. It's fucking unbelievable. And I just remember one thing about MMJ is they don't play, if they do play three shows like that in a row, they don't play the same tune ever again. The no repeats. The no repeat, thank you. So we knew what was coming the last night, and I was hard charged, ready to rock. Then we saw them in Chicago, which was unbelievable. And then I would say uh, my morning jacket at Red Rocks a couple years with, ago with you guys was unbelievable. Quincy was there, a few of the other boys. It was unbelievable. And then I saw the Lumineers at Staples this year. If you haven't seen the Lumineers live, to you boys out there, Binger, if you got a girl up in Santa Monica, next time Lumineers come through, take her, bud. Just heads up at the pull-up couch. Won't have to, yeah, watch out for the pull-up couch, but the rest will take care of itself, bud. You just let, you just let them do your thing. You'll be fine. So um, live music's the best. Ups. It's the best. Do you think we could do Bonnaroo one more time? I know I couldn't. Actually. I'm gonna bring Bill Beckham to Bonnaroo one time. Yeah. Show him how. Show him how it's done. It's gonna be a little different than. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I got my little buddy. Hey, bud, let's go to this after show here. Dead Mouse is playing. I got glow sticks and light all kinds of fun shit. Get in here. <laughs> uh, Keener, great call. Great call, fella. My morning jacket, Jimmy. We love him. What's next, Maxi? We got a beauty from Port Hope calling in here. Oh boy. Oh boy. Hey fellas, my name's Brody Aitchison. I'm from Port Hope, Ontario, Obi's hometown. Figured I'd put in a cart curfew call. I think this is a great idea. But anyway, uh, last weekend we were at the Port Hope Fair. I'm sure Obi knows about it. And it uh, gets pretty busy every year, but this year was just absolutely different with Trudeau having a stranglehold on us for however long <laughs> it was. But anyway, um, we're waiting in line for the beer tent. It was probably like an hour long, and any beauty knows if you're waiting an hour for a beer, you better get sick. So we, uh, I decided to do that. Anyways, we go over to the uh, to where the derby was, and it was absolutely packed. Like if Obi knows that hill, the abs- the, pil- the hill was absolutely packed with people. And anyway, um, so we decided to go to the bottom, standing on picnic tables and whatnot. And I happened to notice this uh, hot blonde chick. You know, I'm there with my boys and my old lady, and. I figure I'll just jump up on the picnic table and say, hey, and she notices I have six beers. She asks for one. Her boyfriend goes to the bathroom, and all I can feel is a paw print on my lower back. 
and she notices my mustache and says, Hey, do you give rides on that thing? <laughs> immediately back, I go, well, you know, honey, if I was single, I'd let you butt the damn line. But anyway, I figured I'd put a call in. I love this idea, boys. Keep her going. Um, I love the pot. I listen every Thursday, fellas, but I only got a minute and a half here, so I'll leave it at that. Keep her up, fellas. Keep going. Yeah, damn beauty. <laughs> hey, so I finally heard. I, I got what he said. What did he say? I'd let you butt in the damn line. Butt. So like, come and cut in the line. Gotcha for the beers. For the beers. I would have let her come in the damn line too. Yeah, I love that. I love that. You gotta love Port Hope, Ontario. Eh? The the one has a girlfriend. The girl has a boyfriend. The boyfriend leaves. The girlfriend leaves, <laughs> and they're fucking, I'm like, there we go. There we go. That's what, Port Hope. But what it. he's talking about is the Port Hope Fall Fair up dog. There oh, wasn't yeah. many things in Port Hope you got excited about. The Fall Fair was one of them. The hill he's talking about, we'd have the hill, and then we'd have the, the highlight of the fair was the um, demolition derby. Oh, nice. And it is just def- like monster trucks. Just monster. It wasn't monster trucks. Rally was, cars. Yeah, old shitty cars. But that was the time where you could get the girls up on the hill, you get the beers flowing, you get the blankets out. Are we talking like, uh, you know, college kind of days? We're talking like, like high school. Oh, yeah. High school. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you go to the fall fair. All the girls would come out. All the guys would come out. You watch the derby, and then there's fireworks, and that's the time where you can, you know, get her going. Tragically hit plays. Oh, I wish. I right, wish. Any, any I would say, you know or? what? I, I, I don't think there was a whole lot of live music. Maybe there is now, but when yeah. I was going through, there wasn't a whole lot. So, um, six beers. I respect that. How do you carry six? Fuck you. I mean, you do it. Back pocket. Two in the oh, back. If they're bottles, two, you just stick them between your hands. Two in the back pocket, maybe in the front. And your buddy's with you, right? Up but they're not th- handing out bottles there. People be getting fights and smash <laughs> bottles. Hey. There was all, and I, was I was gonna say there was always a fight. Big Valley Jamboree for me back in Camrose, Alberta. Guaranteed. It would just be like Fort Mac versus Camrose versus Lloyd versus Fort Sask. And they're just <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I mean, I didn't hardly went. You know, yeah. and if I did, I was. Yeah, I, taking in the line, and dancing. then I missed a lot of it too, right? Because I left when I was like, you know, I was gone when I was sixteen, I guess, or yeah, sixteen or seventeen. So I didn't get to see all of them because they're in September. But the ones I did get to see, they were uh, they were fun. Awesome, were fun. I would go with all my baseball buddies. Usually, that's the guys I would go with. The guys I played baseball all summer with. But yeah, the old Port Hope Fall Fair looks like it's still going, right? Yeah. Going stronger than ever. So thanks for um, the call, thanks boys. Thanks for the call, bud. Way to keep Port Hope on the map, fella. Uh, Maxi, great job on that. Um, Updog, we got Max Homa coming at you next, fella. Can't wait to break it down with this beauty.